Sean Webb here with Athletic Motion Golf, here with my good friend Mike Granado. And Mike, we hear it all the time. It's one of those buzzwords in golf. I got stuck, or I'm stuck, or my arms are stuck, or the club is stuck behind me, right? And I think a lot of people have heard it. They don't know what it means, but if they do know what it means and they have the issue, they don't know how to fix it. Right, it's the other S word in golf that nobody wants to be, right? Yep. Nobody wants to be stuck. And the reason is it makes it difficult to control where the club face goes, right? When that club face is coming in the golf ball, and you're stuck and it's typically with the right arm, you're not really sure where that face is gonna be pointing and you have to give it a lot of hand action down by the ball and that creates a lot of issues for golfers. So in this video, we're gonna talk about ways golfers get stuck and then show you ways to get unstuck with a few key drills. All right, Sean, let's just jump right in and talk about ways that golfers get themselves stuck in the downswing and it really happens way before the downswing starts. Yeah, I think um, a lot of times, it's in, in a lot of ways we look at the golf swing, things happen in the backswing that cause problems in the downswing, right. right? And this is no different. So I think the first thing that can happen is right away in the takeaway, and I'll stand this way, the golfer will start pulling their arms behind them really early, almost like a, a lawnmower, right? Right, there's a, there's a move out there called the lawnmower move, and this yeah. right elbow gets behind. Like if Sean, put your arm out in front. So. If, Sean has his shirt seam right here. If he's uh -huh. getting that right elbow way behind that shirt seam early in the takeaway. Yeah, so as soon as that happens, the arms and the club get behind me, right? Mm -hmm. And as I turn to the top, they're trapped in right. a spot where it's very difficult. I'm either gonna do one or two things. I'm either gonna get the club very stuck in behind me coming down, or I'm gonna make this gonna over get it the off top of you. motion. Like yeah. a lot of people react to having their, their arms stretched back like that. That's exactly right. So one of the key first episodes of getting stuck mm -hmm. happens literally right in the takeaway. Yeah, as soon as they take the club away again, they just pull this arm behind them. Club and arm gets deep, the left arm gets pinned across the chest, which we talk about a lot in our other videos, which we don't like, right? right? Cause that causes a ton of problems. So that right there is on your way to being stuck. Right, that's exactly right. Now, if you don't get stuck in the takeaway, which hopefully you don't, golfers have a really big window where they do get stuck nearing the top of the backswing. Yeah, so the, the next spot where I would say they get stuck, let's say they make a decent takeaway, mm -hmm. kind of on plane, arms in front, and the club in line with the hands. But from here, they stop turning their trunk uh, and their rib cage, and they let their arms and this right elbow, get again, get way deep in behind them. Because they're not making a turn here, they got to get the club back there somehow. Right, it's a way for golfers, and, and you can look if you're under turning by where this right shoulder is in your backswing. So if I make a backswing, and I still see the right shoulder on this side of my head, I'm gonna to start to account for that or make up for that by just pulling this right elbow behind me. But the shoulder hasn't moved. We want this right shoulder to disappear at worst behind the head, hopefully to show up on this side of my head. That way this arm doesn't have to get behind me. You can see it right here, get behind me and get stuck for the downswing. Yeah, and that gets you in a spot where, A, the club may get really stuck in behind and the arms are behind and, and the whole problem with all of this is that it creates this situation at the bottom where you have to rely on a lot of timing. Right. And you need a lot of wrist movement and forearm roll to make contact. Roll, flip, all those things right down by the ball. And if you're that guy that can go out and shoot 75 and you're hitting it good, next day you go out and shoot 95 and you're hitting it all over the place, right. this is a spot you know, where you want to start taking a look. Am I getting my arms and clubs stuck behind me where everything is late and I'm having to flick it at the last second? It's a terrible feeling. And I mean, I get into it with my game sometimes. If I start, yeah. my sequence gets a little off, so. And that brings us to the third way. Absolutely. Right, and it's just getting these hips so far started while the arms are either going back or haven't started down that there's a big gap here out of sequence and you just can't get the arms back out in front. That's the classic one. And um, one of my favorite Golf Channel episodes of all time is um, when Butch Harmon had Tiger Woods on right. back in 2000. Peter Kessler. Right before he yeah. went on that four majors in a row run. Right. It was right before that, he had him on the show in the studio. And Tiger called it the Ole move, right. where he held the arms up and spun his body because as a junior golfer that allowed him to get power. But the problem with that is when he did that, the club pitched way behind him too much and his arms got behind his turn so much that he had to flick it and roll at the bottom and fire the arms and wrists really hard. So he either hit a big block or a big hook. When the timing was on, he hit it great. That's right. We probably see that more with better players or better athletes, uh -huh. younger athletes who are able to really crank that hip rotation. 
Uh, the other two, probably more with golfers just learning to play the game more. Mm -hmm. And, you know, either pulling it back or getting it back at the top or then really firing the hips right out of the top. All three of those will get you stuck. One of those three will get you stuck. If you're doing more than one of those, you're really stuck. Yeah, and the, I think part of the issue is the concept problem. You know, exactly. golfers have been reading and watching videos for ages and information's out there can be so bad, right? Mm -hmm. Telling golfers that they need to fire the hips first um, out of the top of the swing. And we've done the research using gears that we know that everything pretty much starts down about the same time within a very tight window. And if you're trying to physically get the hips out in front, that's gonna spin everything so far ahead with the lower body that again, you have your club is stuck and you have to flip. The time it takes between when the lower body starts to downswing and the upper body happens faster than I can snap my fingers. So for all practical purposes, it goes at the same time. Trying to separate those and train separating those is really going to lead you down some wrong roads. One of those is getting stuck. Exactly. Now, you know, as your body prepares to move this thing down, yeah, your lower body will settle in and you'll get a right. little, it'll start maybe a little sooner for some golfers, sure. but to try to fire the, the hips out in that front is. is a disaster. The club's going to get stuck and you're going to start flipping. And um, if you get a chance to search for that Tiger video, it's a great video. It started getting your head like some of his feels, and we're going to get into those in a minute with the, with the drill section. That's right. All right, so let's hop right into it. Sean, in the David Tom series, How I Play Golf, that we shot with him, he talked, he said something that he, he almost said it in passing, but it has such a huge impact on so many golfers. He said, You can't make a bad backswing from starting almost in the finish. Yeah, so what Mike is saying is David uh, took the club here and said it's very difficult to make a bad swing or backswing if you swing the club into yeah. the backswing. He said there would be no more bad backswings if you started the golf swing out here. Yeah, because once you get it there, you've got a little bit of body turn in the, right, in the frontward or the, the forward side direction. The club's in front of you. Once you give it some momentum and swing it, your body and arms naturally take on the right motion and That's get the right. club in a good spot. You would never do this and go like this. Right. You would never go here and go up lifting with your arms. And because of that momentum, as you go back, your body naturally starts to rotate as well. That's exactly right. So if you're one of those golfers who gets stuck in a takeaway, put it out here and you're not going to get it stuck like this, right? Nobody's going to do this. You're going to put it up here, yeah. swing it back, and it's going to be pretty much where you want it. Now, a drill for that, and a great way to feel that, is just take your right hand, put it by your side, throw your left hand up here, boom. Just kind of right through here at this takeaway spot. And you're gonna be in really good shape. If you do that, then you start putting your right hand on it. Then you can start catching it with your right hand and completing your backswing. But getting that momentum started yeah. when you do that is key. And I think that's where a lot of golfers get and trouble is they'll get lined up a certain way and then kind of pull everything off the ball. They don't know how to start to swing. That's right. You know, they just don't know how to start to swing. So from a stock still frozen position, I mean, that feels, that the club can get a little bit heavy down there. You're gonna to react to the way. It's getting it started. Yeah, it gets it moving. So that's why you see some of the old school golfers and even like some of the newer guys kind of making these little moves that's to right. get the club moving, right? Uh, and this drill will give you that sensation. You might find you need to add in a little bit of, maybe just a little uh, shift into your left foot just to get things moving. But the, the problem lies, I think, is this static stock still uh, set up where you just yank the arms, mm -hmm. right? That's exactly right. Stuck. That's exactly right, and that's right off the bat. So that's trouble if you're getting yourself in, stuck, in a stuck position right off the bat. Now, if you're not doing that, or if you're doing that, do that left arm drill, graduate it, no right hand, then putting the right hand on, then catching it with the right hand. It's really gonna get the takeaway tuned up. Now, going into the rest of the backswing, there are two really good drills to help you keep this right elbow where it needs to be. All right, now let's talk about how to tune up the end of this backswing, or going into the end of the backswing with where there's right arm for you guys to get the right arm really behind you to kind of create more, a fake shoulder turn, essentially. Yeah, because the shoulders have a lot of mobility just inside the the joint. Right? Yeah, you're just trying to get the club farther back, but you're not really doing it with turn. So on the downswing, you get in big trouble because you get stuck. Yeah, so most players have just don't have a, even understand how much this rib cage actually has to move, and it's tight on me. I haven't even warmed up today. <laughs> I noticed your breath was a little cracking there a little bit. So, you know, the way to practice that, you can just classic cross your arms, yes. right? Um, and feel like the rotation comes from more of the rib cage. 
right? Instead yes. of just cranking my right shoulder. So a good back way to do way. this, if you put this golf ball, stand back there in that stance. Mm -hmm. Put this golf ball just center of his stance or just one ball forward of center. We'll say right there. Mm -hmm. All right, let's try to get this grip past the ball without moving laterally towards me. That's a good point. Now I'm going to take this back around me to do it. That's the key. Yeah, so I'm going to turn this one back around behind me without pulling my shoulder away from the, That's right. the club, right? Because that would just be a fake movement That's right. again. So keep my shoulders here, just neutral shoulders. Rotate this behind me, turn that past the ball. That gets me in a pretty good spot. Now, as you do it, this is a whole other video, but try not to twist your hips right. toward the target. You want to really isolate the movement from, That's right. from the trunk. Doing right, this. exactly. And I can feel a stretch through these muscles in, in this direction here. Excellent. Now, when you get good at doing that and you start to break up some of this immobility, we'll call it, mm -hmm. I want you to do one other piece to that. And this will be kind of part B for this first drill. So go ahead and take that same position with the mm -hmm. club across your chest. Mm -hmm. And you're going to make one? a turn. No, okay. you're still going to keep it across your chest. You make right. a turn. Now you just extend your arms out, grab the club, Extend your arms out straight out in front of you. That's where you should be. Yeah, that feels good right, there. So you're gonna, you're gonna go turn, then just extend the arms out. You're not really gonna have the inclination to turn and then exactly. pull the arm behind you and do that. So you really wanna feel the arms and hands more in front of my chest mm -hmm. once I get up to that spot. Absolutely right. Now, Sean's got a, an advanced version of this drill when this becomes easy. Yeah, so this one here, you take the club, it's a, it's a little tricky at first. You take the grip of the club and stick it, if you're a right hander, stick it in the, the uh, pit of your, your left mm -hmm. elbow here, right? And you grab the club this way. Okay. Okay, so you're holding the club, it's a little awkward at first, but you'll get used to it. So here, grab the club in front of you this way, and you've got control of it. Now, s put your right hand down like you're about to hit a golf shot, right? And put it, the shaft across the other side of your elbow. Okay, inside your elbow here. Now, as you go back, you're gonna turn, but keep the shaft against your arm. Don't pull your elbow away from the shaft. So if I just make a turn and keep my arm there, with, and the other cool part about this drill, it teaches you the right amount of elbow bend. Right. You don't wanna bend so far that you squeeze that shaft. the shaft. You're gonna actually be less than 90. So I'll do it from this direction. I mean, what a great way to feel that in this direction. If I made a bad takeaway, if I pulled off late, I'm getting good sensation here where my right. right arm needs to be in relation to my turn. And I can monitor and make sure I'm turning this 90 degrees. That's a great a drill when you're out there hitting balls, or even if you're on the course and you hit a couple squirrely shots, just stand over there on the tee box the next hole and just kind of get this feeling again. It's a great drill to start your practice session with, just to make sure you're starting it from a good spot. Now, an advanced version of that, right? This is more fun than anything. An advanced version of that is really gonna to start to kind of show you the downswing motions associated with this. So Should he's I, gonna do the same thing with the club and arm. Should I try it? Now we're just gonna put camera? another club in his hand. Let me give it a shot? Yeah, absolutely. Let's see if I can toe shank the camera's to the camera. right. Good. Make contact. So yeah, it's um, a little bit harder than it looks, but I mean, if you work on it, and do it just with the grass first, just brushing the ground, and then do that from so they can see from behind you, the yeah, down the line view, way. and they can just see how how quickly this right arm gets back in position where it needs to be. So from here, it stays on in the finish too. He gets out in front of his shirt seam that we talked about earlier. That right elbow gets in front of that shirt seam without really trying to do some crazy yeah, and pull it in. Time. You would never make a motion either like this. You have right. to actually swing that arm down in front of you again, which again, keeps you from getting stuck. So it's a, a really a nice drill to work on all aspects of your, your swing. That's exactly right. Now, last one, it's our tiger drill. Okay, we alluded, I alluded to this earlier about the Tiger Woods uh, Golf Channel episode with Peter Kessler and Butch Harmon. And go out and check it out. It's actually really good. But the thing that uh, Butch made him do, and he said it was the thing that he hated the most. Yeah, it's not fun. He said that Butch, and they would stand out in Vegas for hours on the range and knew this drill, and it was the drill, he said, that I, I believe helped him the most. Yeah. Right? So what would Butch would have him do, because Tiger had this Olay movie called it where he was just completely stuck. Really fast hips, really yeah. early hips. Butch would have him go to the top of the swing and come to a complete stop. So take the club to the top, come to a complete stop, and Tiger's feel what he was trying to do was get the club 
to beat his belt buckle to the ball. Mm -hmm. Now, it doesn't really happen like that. And Tiger would say, it felt like I was doing that. But what that would do is get him matched up where his arms would swing. He had to feel like his arms were swinging down in front of him this way, yes. right? Down in front of his body before his hips started firing. There's been a lot of pros do that very similar drill since then. You see Justin Rose doing this yeah. all the time. So very similar. So I'll do the Tiger drill just to show you. Take it up and pause. And just hit it easy and feel like your arms are starting down and your, your pelvis kind of catches up. You're going to feel more rotation later where it really matters, not early getting out of sequence. Yeah, and it may not look like it feels on video, but for some of you, you just need a little bit sooner start with the arms because you've been taught to fire so hard out of the top that's with exactly hips. That's exactly right. And if you, if you just naturally have fast tips, that's a great mm -hmm. weapon to have in the golf swing. We're not big fans of trying to slow the hips down because, again, that's a good weapon to have. You have to speed some of the other things up to play along so it's balanced. Absolutely. Right. So you've got to get the arms in position earlier if you have super fast hips. Don't try to hold the hips. Get the arms active earlier. That's going to put a governor on the hips and the whole system as far as sequence goes. Yeah, it keeps you getting unstuck. Gets the club back out in front of you like good players are always talking always about. Good. Right? That feeling is good because it controls the club face. You don't have to rely on this kind of flippy timing. That's right. So if you suffered from being stuck in the golf swing, now we've given you three reasons why that's probably happening and a few drills to really help you get unstuck so you can hit the ball more solidly, more compressed, and more at the target. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did enjoy it, go ahead and give it a like. Also, if you have any questions about today's video or you have an idea of a video that you want us to shoot, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. We read every single comment. We also respond to the comments. So again, leave us a comment if you have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see. Now, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. We have videos coming out every single week and we don't want you to miss one. So by clicking subscribe, that ensures you're notified right away when a new video comes out. And hey, if you want to add instant distance to your drive, and we all do, everybody wants more distance, go ahead and click the link in the pinned comment below. You're going to see a link. Click on it. It's going to take you to a page. You're going to enter your name and email address. We're going to send you an email where you're going to get access to instant distance, which is a video training that we put out. We know it's going to help you. We know we're going to see you farther down the fairway.